In this video, I'm going to talk about the basics of MIDI in Max 7. I won't talk at all about what MIDI actually is, so if you're not familiar with that, you should go and find that out first. In this video, I just talk about how to implement it into Max. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is actually just an interface object, but it'll get you started because it's a keyboard. This object is called a K slider. So I'll press N for new object, and I'll type K slider. Output numbers from an on-screen keyboard. So you can see that this looks a lot like a piano. However, this object actually doesn't function like a piano. It's just a big graphical interface. Out the left, I have the key value changed or received. Let me show you what that is. And out the right outlet, I have the velocity, which is determined by the mouse height when it clicks on a key. Here's an integer. So I'm just gonna click here on my middle C, and you can see that I have an output here of 60 and an output here of 23. I'll come back and just click a little bit higher, and you can see that as I click higher on the case slider, my velocity, that's the right outlet, is going up. By the way, in MIDI, velocity is how quickly you're striking the key. Since we don't have a physical interface here, like an actual keyboard, we can't see how quickly you're actually clicking. So Max has to do it with this XY visual interface. The higher you click on the key, the louder, quote unquote, it is. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but that's how it works. On the left hand side, you have the pitch coming out. If you're not familiar with MIDI, you should know that middle C is always 60. Pitch goes from 0 to 127 and goes in semitones. So if I click down the keyboard here, every half step, I'm decreasing by one integer. So this K slider is not actually making any sound. To get some sound, we have to actually send MIDI messages out to our sound module on our computer. And we're going to do that with an object called note out. Oops. Note out. So the inlets here we're looking at are pitch, velocity, and the MIDI channel. So as we mentioned, we already have pitch and we already have velocity. There's one more object we need to add in here before we send our message to our note out. And that is called make note. Make note's job is to generate a note on and note off pair. So if I were to send my pitch and my velocity directly into note out, I would only be turning the note on and not turning it off. So it's really important that we add this make note object in here in case we're using an, uh, an instrument that is sustained. For example, in MIDI you have clarinets or trumpets or other wind instruments or perhaps synthesizer sounds as well that when you trigger to turn on do not have a natural end. If you're using a harp or a piano sound, which in the physical world would have a natural end once you've plucked, then it will eventually turn off. But just as good practice, we're going to add this make note in here. Another thing that make note does for you that's really great is allows you to set a default value for velocity and duration. So remember velocity, how quickly you're striking the key or how essentially how loud your sound is. Duration in milliseconds is how long you want your note to play. So I'm going to give my velocity a max value, 127. And I'm going to give my duration one second. So that's 1000 milliseconds. We're only doing one channel here. So because it's by default one, I can leave that argument off. All right, let's hook these up. So I am going to send my pitch into my make note. And I'm actually going to leave my velocity here out. So why am I going to do that? Well, make note, we just determined would have a default value and we're, sending it, we're saying that it's 127. So I don't want the velocity from this case slider to affect my sound, because remember we just talked about the fact that it's not a very good interface here. So I'm gonna leave that out, and in fact, I'll just delete this integer box here so that we don't have to worry about it. And then I'll take the output of my make note and put it into my input, my pitch, and the output of my make note here, velocity, into my input of my note out. 
I'd like these to look a little nicer. I'm going to select them all and say Command Y, and that'll line them up. Okay, so now if we click somewhere on our keyboard, lock our patch, we should be hearing some sound. So lastly, I'd just like to show you here that we don't have to have this case slider. It's a handy visual interface to get into, but all it is is a visual interface. So let's delete it. We can just make sounds with integer boxes. So I could set these up. I could trigger them with bangs so that I could play multiple notes at a time. Oops, let's just use one bang here. Back to piano. I'm a musician, so I know what the numbers are for a major chord. I can play them all together. Go down a half step for a minor chord. All right. And if you've been following along and you've seen our metro and counter setup, this is a way that you could set up a little bit of a song. Let's do an eight bar phrase. One to eight. See what count we're on here. And we're going to use a select object. And we will hear some music, let's hear on the downbeat, and the next downbeat, and maybe the last two beats. So I'd like to hook this up to play a triad and then all of my notes at once at the end. So I'm going to take this output of my select object, which will bang if input matches one, trigger my 60, my second output to trigger 63, my third 67, and lastly, on my last beat, the when counter hits 8, I'm going to use it to trigger this bang, which will trigger all three of these notes at the same time. Hmm, something has gone wrong here. Oh, I know. Shall we set a tempo? So I've set up a really basic musical pattern, just a triad here. I can change my rhythm by changing which beats I select here. So maybe we'll do just the first four. Oops, 